Hey, it's Joe Fair with Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to make an animated movie poster using Warble for iOS. You can see Warble basically takes static images and it can basically make them animated and come to life. This is really cool for desktop backgrounds that are animated using things like a wallpaper engine, but also for my Dynaframe project, this is a great way to make the animated artwork for your walls. The thing is, we're going to want something that is a certain format so that when it shows up, on the Dynaframe, it's you know nine by 16 if you're gonna do vertical or horizontal. I'll show you how to do all that. And what we're gonna start out with is actually we're gonna animate the Back to the Future movie poster. So let me show you that there. We're gonna basically take this movie poster and we're gonna make this animated. Okay, so let's see how to do that. The first thing is to get the movie poster, you can search for it. I found the movie poster on Amazon here. I clicked visit, it showed up here. And then I just basically like zoomed it into my screen and I hit volume up and power and that screenshot it. Now you can take the screenshot and you can crop out the top and bottom and so on. And you have a nice clean file to work with here. Now we're going to go over to our Wurble app and we're going to hit the W here at the bottom and it'll load up our pictures. It starts out with the last image. So it's nice and handy. I'm going to click on this double uh, or this triple dots here and go nine by 16. And now I'm going to resize. And the reason we're doing this is this gets us the right aspect ratio. You got to decide what you want to sacrifice. If you want to sacrifice a little bit of the side or whatnot, because a lot of posters are not going to match exactly. I'm going to do black bars top and bottom and just really focus on keeping the full in, uh, poster here. Once I have that, I'm going to click on the right arrow here. And now we can start adding our effects. When I look at this work, the first thing I see is the fire right here under them. And so I want to add some fire there and I'll show you how to add that effect. So we're going to go through our, our uh, different effects and there's one called Inferno, but that will add fire all the way around. We want to do flame and here's different effects. This is how Wurble works. You can hit any of these, it'll load them up and then you can resize them with two fingers. You can rotate them and so on. We want to find something for this layer that is very similar to what is there. So I'm going to look for a streak of fire like this one. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm already liking what that looks like. I'm going to try this one first. Okay, this one I think is a bit better for what I'm looking for here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have it go through his leg because I find the effect is a bit better if it goes past him. So we'll, we'll fill in the fire here. We're going to hit the plus sign, add another layer. We'll put a second one here and there we go. Now we can go through. Okay, so what we want to do though is want to erase it where his leg is. And what I'm going to do there is I'll click this uh, wrench. We'll go over the mask tool. When it says canvas zoom enabled, I can use two fingers to zoom in on the canvas here. And we're basically just going to paint a bit of a mask here. Now a mask will erase this. And what's cool about this effect is if you get the fire to go in front and behind him, it ends up looking a bit better. So we've got a little bit on his knee here. We'll get the effect off of there. There we go. So you get a little bit there. So I can see there's a little bit more fire. We're going to zoom in, or I'm sorry, zoom out. We'll get this cleaned up. There we go. So that's our first streak of fire. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here is I'm going to uh, click on the mask tool. I'm going to go over to blending and I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit, make it a little bit less uh, noticeable especially on the back half of the fire there. And then the other thing I want to try to find is, uh, let's see, the pulse. We can set the offset here. And what the offset does, since I copied two of the same uh, layers, I want the fire to burn differently. Otherwise, you'll see the pattern. All right, I'm liking that. I've got some more fire to fill in. So we're going to go back to the effects. We're going to add another layer. And I'll look for something a bit more burly to kind of fill in this portion here. And I'm going to rush through this because I'm making a video. I just want to get the idea. But this is one of those things where you can spend as long or as uh, not on the effects. Basically just kind of tuning everything in and getting it to where you want it. So I'm going to fill in this fire here. I'm liking that. That fire is like it right in front of the car. I'm going to actually, I think, do a couple of smaller layers here. Blend them in together. There we go. And I'm going to try to cover the existing fire in the uh, video as much as I can so that everything lines up. So there we go. 
Okay, so the, now I've got the fire part. Now the other thing I see is this light coming off of him. So I'm going to add a layer. We're going to switch off of the flame effects. And there's a couple different ways things I can go, do here. I want to add some artistic uh, flair to this. And one of my favorite effects here is the apocalypse. The apocalypse adds this glowing effect here. Now these each of these does something a little bit different. I'm going to find one that's about what I'm looking for here. Now the colors I'm not worried about. I can always change that later. Okay, kind of like this one here. And we're going to do another major mask. We're going to mask out all of him and everything, but we'll have that effect there. And I'll show you how opacity really affects this. So first thing we'll do is we'll go to blending and we'll lower the opacity so it's not quite so intense. The other thing, of course, is we're going to have to majorly mask this off. So I'm just going to start coloring in the DeLorean, the fire. We don't want that to happen on the road, any of this. We want this all masked out. Now we're going to start going on Marty, and what I find is cool is if the background around him, if you actually mask him out and take the time to do it right, it will look really good. Okay, and then over here for the basically the title, we're going to mask it out on the title here. We don't need the title to be flickering. Everything that you add ends up kind of as a foreground Kind of make it a subtle effect. There we go. So now we got a bit of a stormy effect there. Oh, so the other thing to look at is if you have black bars at the top and bottom, you're going to want to mask your black bars off. Um, otherwise, things get really wonky. So there we go. Okay, so we got a bit of a flicker. There's one last thing I want to show you, and that is a light leak. Um, light leaks are really subtle, but they really can add quite a bit. So this, we're going to light leak. We're going to rearrange it. Just basically two finger rotate. We're going to rotate it around on the car. And what I want to do is kind of match up with where the rays are coming off. Now, again, we're going to switch over to mask and we'll mask it off. And then we'll also do the blending and we'll lower the opacity of that. So we get a bit of a animated lighting coming off the car there. I just want that to be really subtle, but it gives it a bit of an animation. That is about what I'm going to do. I think there's a little bit of more masking I want to do off of right here on the car. We want to get the DeLorean to... All right, there we go. So now we've got our apocalypse effect. We've got our fire. We've got our light leak. Now, how do we save this off? So in the upper right hand corner, the share button, we can hit that share button and it will generate and we'll have an option of doing an animated GIF. If we say save to photos, you can do save a video or make an anime GIF, uh, even a live photo. For the Dynaframe project, I typically save it as a video and I'll make it about 30 seconds. And then you can take that file off of your phone. So I typically use this transfer Wi-Fi transfer to get this onto my computer. This app's called Simple Transfer. You basically can transfer it over Wi-Fi. This is really nice because I find it very reliable, especially for large files very fast even though it's over Wi-Fi and I don't have to break out a cable or anything. I can just basically browse my phone, click on whatever I want to download. It will download and transcode it for me to whatever format I need. All right, that was a really quick episode for today, but something that people have asked about, about how to make these animated posters. And I thought I'd do a couple episodes just showing that every now and then to give you guys just some new cool tips. These are super useful if you have Dynaframes, but also you can share them. You can put them up on Instagram. There's a lot of different ways to share these. The one thing to know is when you close the Wurble app, you really lose the access to the project. It doesn't seem to have a way of saving the project off. So when you're done with your, your file, make sure that you make your saves in the formats that you care about. Instagram, uh, Facebook, whatever you want to save it to. Get those out there. So that way you've got them to share. I typically make an animated GIF that is really short and then a video. And then I send the animated GIF to my friends. That way they can see what's going on and then make the videos for longer ones. While I'm doing this, here's a couple of other ones I've made just to give you some other ideas of what's possible. We've got a dragon here. I've animated the fire off the dragon. This is a Raiden one where I've animated the electricity on Raiden. Just some really fun stuff, all using this Wurble app. It's available for iOS. It's not available for Android, but some of the other videos I do, I will do Android-friendly ones using other software. All right, thanks a lot. I'm Joe Firth Geek Toolkit. Till next time.